Bring it right in. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Marcucci? Present. Councilor Moriarty? Present. Councilor McDonald? Delayed. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Peliquin? Present. Councilor Regis? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight here? Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider it and accept, and please um, forgive the council reorganization. That's not right. It's just consider and accept the minutes of Monday, August 13th, 2012. So moved. Second. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Excuse me. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Peliquin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Abstain. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Six yes to abstain. Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports. A, general government. Councilor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the general government subcommittee was held on Wednesday, August 22nd, 2012 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairwoman Regis, committee members Councilor Langevin and Councilor Nicola. Also in attendance were Karen Hanois, Monique Mana, Michael Janes, and Jim Sotilli. Councilor Pelican was excused. <coughs> Chairwoman Regis called the meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote to approve the appointment of Larry Spinelli of Southbridge to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year period, effective August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2013. A motion was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Councilor Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Larry Spinelli to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year term, expiring July 31, 2013. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number two was discuss and vote to approve the appointment of Michael Janes of Southbridge to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year period, effective August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2013. A motion was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Councilor Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Michael Janes to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year term expiring July 31, 2013. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number three, discuss and vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and AA Transportation Company, Inc. to lease 40,345 square feet of parking at 185 Gulfwood Road at a monthly rental fee of $1,500. Mrs. Hanoi said the lease amount was an increase from last year's rate of $1,000. The new lease is for a rate of $1,500. The minutes state for a year, that should be per month. Uh, with a right to extend three times for three successive one-year terms. It's actually a one-year contract with the ability to extend for three consecutive years. So if we uh, do um, use our ability to extend, it would be for a four-year term. So a motion was made by Councillor Langevin and seconded by Councillor Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council to ratify the agreement with AA Transportation Company, Inc. to lease 40,345 square feet of parking at 185 Gulford Road at a monthly rental fee of $1,500. Vote by show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number four was discuss and vote to ratify the contract between the Town of Southbridge and KMS Actuaries for the GASB 45 OPEB actuarial study in the amount of $5,900. Mrs. Hanoi stated this is a study that must be updated every two years. She sent out nine requests for bids and received five responses. KMS Actuaries was the lowest bid and after making inquiries, she was comfortable working with them. Monies have already been appropriated to cover the cost. A motion was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Councilor Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council to ratify the contract with KMS Actuaries. For the GASB 45 OPEB actuarial study in the amount of $5,900. Vote by show of hands, all in favor. Other, Councilor Nicola stated she had been approached by several people on various committees, not the town council, to adopt a remote participation policy. 
She has received a memo from Copeland and Page regarding the open meeting law, remote participation. Councilor Nicola asks that the General Government Subcommittee review the memo in law and weigh in on its adaptation. Chairwoman Regis said she will call another meeting to discuss this so that all members have an opportunity to review the information. A motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Councilor Nicola. Vote by show of hands. All in favor. The meeting adjourned at 7.22 p.m. Respectfully submitted. Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And I have no meeting scheduled at this time, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. B, DPW, Councilor Vandal. Um, no report and no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. C, Education and Human Services, Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report, but I do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow, August 28th at 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. I know the um, memo says 6.30, but it is 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. D is Planning and Development, Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee was held on Monday, August 20th, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Subcommittee Member Council Moriarty, and Citizens Members Evelyn Petrelli and James Staffslin. Councilor McDonald was absent, and we also had a number of uh, citizen members that were there, citizens that were also in the room. We called the meeting to order at 7.02. Agenda item one, the town manager has appointed and seeks town council confirmation on establishing a master planning steering committee and nine subcommittees according to the recommendations attached in the memo from Cassandra Ackley dated 8.15.12. Ms. Ackley introduced Brian Barber and Bill Geisentanner from Community Preservation Associates, the company which was contracted to help with our master planning work. Ms. Sackley explained the process followed for selecting the steering committee and the public forum. Mrs. Ackley stated there are five members of the subcommittees that are not Southbridge residents and requested clarification as to whether they could be on subcommittees as the bylaw states that appointed members of committees must be Southbridge residents or employees of the town. After consulting with the town clerk, Medi Doust, we were informed that the steering committee is the appointed body and they must be Southbridge residents. The subcommittees under this appointed body would be ad hoc committee members, temporary members, and therefore can be non-Southbridge residents. A motion was made by Council Moriarty and seconded by Evelyn Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of the Master Planning Steering Committee consisting of Rosemarie Alicia Lamoureux, Carlos Garcia, Joan Greenberg, Arnold Lanny, Patrick Lacanto, Christopher Morse, Cynthia Neal, Philip Petinelli, Karen Pekarski, and nine ad hoc subcommittees. A vote by show of hands. All in favor, four to nothing. Agenda item number two, review and recommend development, preservation, and infrastructure priorities for the Central 13 Prioritization Project. Mrs. Ackley explained the Central 13 Prioritization Project. There will be a public forum at the Public House on September 11th from 7 to 9 p.m. Mrs. Ackley encourages participation and attendance at this forum so that you can become informed as to what this project is and what it offers this region. Agenda item number three, review the Fuss and O'Neill report of the downtown sidewalks and make recommendations for redesign. Mrs. Ackley reviewed the findings of the study down by Fuss and O'Neill. Fuss and O'Neill made several recommendations. Mrs. Ackley is asking for recommendations from the council for the redesign. Agenda item four, discuss and recommend priorities for FY 2013 community development grant application. Mrs. Ackley asked for recommendations from the subcommittees. In social services, Mrs. Ackley said she spoke to the state and was told that we could do repeat funding for social, social service projects. Mr. Gomez from Central Las Americas spoke about the goals and accomplishments of their programs. Councilor Moriarty stated, he has heard only good things about the Central Las Americas and Aspira programs. Councilor Clements stated she was amenable to funding up to three existing programs. Housing rehabilitation, Mrs. Ackley recommended doing up to three housing projects. The subcommittee agreed. McCann Fields and Capillo Park. The re-engineering and design would cost between $50,000 and $75,000. I'm going to make a note that um, all of these, these are items that have come up with some concern and, and uh, just direction from the development office, and that's why we're discussing them. These are potential items that we may choose to, um, to fund with, with some of the grant money and different funding um, abilities that we have. So that's why we're discussing them at subcommittee um, and, and kind of prioritizing them for the community. Um, so we move on to the downtown sidewalk and recycling containers. This would repair the section of the sidewalk near Southbridge Savings Bank and add recycling containers to the sidewalks in the downtown area. 
the Chestnut Street sidewalk reconstruction. Figures for this project will be available in October. The subcommittee felt that this is less of a priority. Downtown facades. Mrs. Ackley said her office has received several applications from retailers. She actually mentioned they'd received quite a few applications and we weren't quite sure if we would have enough funding to do all of them because there's a lot of interest in, in updating. Um, a lot of businesses were interested in <coughs> utilizing this fund. Administration, uh, the grants are always, always included administration funds needed for the programs. So just a, just a slight recap so you really understand what happened. Downtown sidewalk, that's very big priority for us on the um, Planning and Development Subcommittee. The housing rehabilitation was very important to us, as was funding some of the existing programs that we have um, that you're aware of, such as Las Americas or the Aspira, or potentially also the Center of Hope program. So we did try to prioritize them and what would be the most need for this community. And I think the, the subcommittee did a really good job with that. A motion to adjourn was made by Evelyn Petrelli and seconded by Council Moriarty. Vote by show of hands. All in favor. We adjourn the meeting at 8.35 p.m., respectfully submitted by Evelyn Rivera. There is a tentative meeting set for the week of September 10th. I believe it will be September 10th, but as soon as we have all the information, we will get it posted as we are required to. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, just a reminder, September 10th is a town council meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're looking at a 6 o'clock meeting prior to that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. E, protection of persons and property, Councillor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the Protection of Person Property Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Langevin, Councilor Regis, Councilor McDonald. Also in attendance was Councilor Nicola, Council Clements, Karen Hainois, Lieutenant Woodson, Chief DeFranzo, Roger Cowett, Estelle Cowett, Michael James, John Larishell, and Jacques Kalanian. Chairman Langevin called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote the appointment of Roger Cowett of Southwest to the PPP subcommittee for one year period effective August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, 2013. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Council McDonald to approve the appointment of Roger Cowett to the PPP subcommittee for a one year term expiring on 2000, uh, excuse me, July 31st, 2012. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 3 0. Uh, agenda item number two discuss and vote the appointment of Monique Manor of uh, Southers to the PPP subcommittee for one year period effective August, two, um, August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, uh, 2013. A motion was made by Council Regis and second by Council McDonald to approve the appointment of Monique Manor to the PPP subcommittee for one year term expiring July 31st, 2012. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Excuse me for a second. In both cases, it should be July 31st, 2013. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> agenda item number three, discuss and vote to approve the purchase of two new cruisers fully equipped as detailed in a mem uh, memo from Chief Charette and attached quote from MHQ at the price of $37,215. Capital expenditures funds of $70,000 are available in the police department budget for the remainder to be taken from the motor vehicle repair account. A motion was made by Councilor Regis, second by Council McDonald to open this item for discussion. Council McDonald stated there are 22 vehicles in the fleet and believes this is an excess for the town this size. Lieutenant Wood Woodson stated there are only seven our everyday cruisers. Many of these vehicles will be coming out of the fleet once new vehicles are procured. Much discussion was held on the value and the cost of keeping all the vehicles. Council Nicola asked about the insurance covers for these vehicles and would like to see the insurance coverage on all these vehicles. Ms. Harnois will check into this and provide request information. A motion to amend the wording on this motion was made by Council McDonald, second by Council Regis. The motion reads, discuss and vote to approve the purchase of two new cruisers fully equipped as detailed in memo from Chief Charette and attached quote from 
MHQ at the price of $37,215. Uh, capital expenditures funds of $78,000 are available in the police department budget and the remainder are taken from the motor vehicle repair account. Two vehicles in the worst condition per the police chief's discretion and paid for with the town appropriation funds are to be auctioned off. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Council Landrum stated he would like to see the auxiliary officers walking around the neighborhoods and not to be given cruises. Council Regis made a motion to postpone any further action. There was no second to the motion. A motion was made by Councilor McDonald and second by Council Regis with favorable recommendation to Council to approve the purchase of the two new cruisers fully equipped. Uh, detail a memo from Chief Charette at the $70,000. Uh, the two vehicles in the worst condition per police chief's discretion and paid for with the town appropriation funds are to be auctioned on. Vote by show of hands, uh, two to one, oppose Council Regis. Agenda item number four, discuss and vote to ratify the contract with Industrial Protection Services for the purchase of 25 complete air pack units to test and recertify our existing 15 air packs units for the total cost of 150,000 said funding from existing capital borrower. Chief DeFranzo explained the value of the air pack units. A motion was made by Council McDonald, second by Council Regis with a favorable recommendation to the council to approve the contract with Industrial Protection Services for the purchase of 25 complete air pack units and test and recertify our existing 15 air packs for a total cost of 150,000 said funding from the existing capital borrowing. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. Agenda item number five, discuss and vote to approve the new recruitment process for the deputy chief as detailed in the town manager's memo, uh, August 15, 2012. Council McDonald stated this position <coughs> has already been advertised Chief DeFranzo said that the advertisement is done, but the process is not disclosed. The recruitment process, as outlined in the memo, needs to be approved prior to hiring. Chief DeFranzo said it was tailored after the chief recruitment process. Council McDonald stated that due to the economic times, he does not feel this position should be filled. A motion was made by Council McDonald, second by Council Regis, with a favorable recommendation to the council to approve the new recruitment process for deputy chief as a detail, uh, as detailed in the town manager's memo stated August 15, 2012. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. A motion to adjourn was made by Council McDonald, second by Council Regis, show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. The meeting was adjourned at 8.03 p.m. and it was respectfully submitted from Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. I have no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Agenda item number five is Chairwoman's announcements. I really don't have anything this evening to share. I'm going to move right on to town manager's announcements. Mrs. Harnois. Thank you. I do have um, three announcements. The first one is a memo from James Moore and the health director to the town departments regarding Southbridge resident solid waste management options. This is a reminder that the landfill is not open to Southbridge residents on a daily basis. There are numerous solid waste management options available. For example, in addition to the weekly trash and biweekly recycling curbside pickup, residents can schedule a bulk pickup for larger items by registering online at www.thinkreduce.com or by calling Casella Waste Services at 888-532-2735. Residents can dispose of leaf and yard waste curbside during designated, designated spring and fall collections or at the DPW at 185 Gulford Road, 24 hours a day, seven days a week from April to December. Hazardous materials are accepted at the quarterly hazardous <coughs> waste collections held at the landfill. Um, and please, please refer residents to the above options or they can contact the health department at 
4252 extension 2. The second notice is also from the Health Department on the Labor Day trash and bulk collection. The trash pickup will be one day behind all week, the week of September 3rd. Bulk pickup will be on Wednesday, September 5th. Register by noon on Monday, September 3rd at www.thinkreduced.com or you can call Caseller at the same number. I had just given 888-532-2735. And the last notice I just want to touch upon is um, new transportation services to be offered by the SCM Elder Bus. Um, a proposal to provide in-town work-related transportation services for residents of five communities within the Elder Bus area without restriction based on age. The specific communities included in the proposal are Southbridge, Sturbridge, Spencer, Webster, and Dudley. The transportation services would be provided within the current operating hours of the organization. Regular fares for the service would apply. The proposed service would be implemented as a pilot program for a period of three months. Results of the program will be reviewed at the conclusion of the three-month period to determine the viability of the program on an ongoing basis. And the ride volume would be the primary factor in determining whether to terminate, continue, or expand the program. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And will they give us an update? date as to when that's going to begin? Um, I, I'm sorry, but I believe that it's September 1st is the, um, the schedule, but also the executive director from Elderbus is going to give a presentation this evening, we're scheduled to, so maybe he can elaborate a little bit more for us. Thank you. That's everything? Yes. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. And moving right into agenda item number seven, which is a swearing in. Uh, time along with presentation time. I don't believe we're going to be doing any swearing in this evening, um, but we do have the presentations. And I'm going to start with A, Tu Sabor Latino Restaurant, Sarah Gonzalez and Eurides Lopez. You come up to the podium, please. Good evening. Excuse me, could you kind of pull it a my little bit? My name is Sarah Gonzalez, and I'm here with my husband, Eurides Lopez, representing the new restaurant, Tu Sabor Latino, located at 12 Crane Street here in Southbridge, specializing in Spanish food, mofongos, and other island dishes. Um, we're a mom and pop restaurant. Uh, we offer dining, delivery, and takeout. Open Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 9 to 5. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 10 to 8. And we specialize in roast pork and other delicious plates. And that is it. And you're already up and running? Yes, we open July 2nd. Excellent. And we're looking forward to seeing you people all around there. Excellent. And if um, you say you do delivering as well, Ms. Yes, Gonzalez? Yes, deliver. What is your phone number? Our phone number is 508-764-1100. Very good. Councillor Clements? Thank you. Do you have a website with your menu and stuff? Or? We're working on it, but we okay. did bring a menu with us that we will leave here. Okay, great. Super. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck to Thank both you. of you. B is the Elder Bus Service, Tim O'Day. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Tim O'Day. I'm the Executive Director of South Central Mass Elder Bus. We are actually located in Charlton. We provide transportation services to seniors and disabled throughout Central Massachusetts. We actually cover 21 communities in Central Mass. It's a very large geographic <coughs> area. Southbridge is one of the towns, obviously, that, that we service. In fact, Southbridge is the most active town that we service. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight is um, we were looking for ways to help 
bridge some of the transportation gaps that we know exist in the towns. If there isn't a fixed route bus service, obviously, there's a gap. With the resources we have, one plan that we came up with was to possibly help uh, people get to and from their job. Uh, we have the resources available to provide the service, the physical resources being the vehicles and also the driver resources as well. So the proposal that we came up with was to provide work-related transportation to residents of five particular towns that have a fairly extensive retail base of businesses, grocery stores, retail stores, et cetera, restaurants. So the proposal was to provide in-town work-related transportation uh, to these five particular towns. To be eligible, you have to be a resident of one of these particular towns and also work in that particular town. And as I said, Southbridge is one of the towns that we've targeted. We're proposing to run it as a pilot program starting September 1st. I know it's right around the corner, but we wanted to get it up and running. Um, it would operate during our normal business hours, which are 8.30 to 3.30. That will allow us a little bit of flexibility in terms of scheduling. Uh, as far as the benefits to the residents, and again, it's a pilot program. I don't know how well it's going to go over in terms of volume, but I, I am hopeful of it. But uh, the benefits to residents would be another low cost option to get uh, to their place of business. The cost to the resident utilizing the service is $1.25 for each trip. So for example, they'd make a reservation with Elderbus. Uh, by the way, we're, we're gonna call it ReadyBus, uh, a service of Elderbus. So they'd make a reservation to be picked up at their home, for example. We would pick them up at their home at their designated time and drop them at their place of business for $1.25. Uh, the return trip, same way. Uh, would pick them up at their place of business and return them to their home if that's where they're going for $1.25. Uh, the difference between this service and the, uh, the elder bus service basically is if the elder bus service has age restrictions or disability restrictions. Elder bus is only eligible to residents that are 60 years of age and older and those with disabilities. This service would not have any age restriction. Any resident could utilize it. So that's, that's uh, the main difference. The, the other difference is, again, it's only within town. Elderbus provides out-of-town transportation as well, but this particular service is only within town. So again, it's a pilot program. Um, I personally have high hopes for it, but I really don't know what kind of volume we're gonna get. We've received a few inquiries lately. We're just in the process of marketing the program. Uh, I've dropped off uh, flyers to the various town halls. We've also dropped flyers off to the various large businesses within Southbridge, uh, the post office, the library, the senior center. Uh, we have a website that's under construction that we hope to have up and running within the next week uh, so we can uh, hopefully get uh, word out about the program. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention, to the residents' attention, and also to solicit your input if you have any questions or concerns about it. What is the website? Uh, is it R E D I Bus? It's or? actually uh, Ready Bus. R E A D Y B U S dot org. O R G. And again, we hope to have it up within the next uh, week or so. Okay, Councillor Clements. Thank you. So, in the meantime, if people want to start your service after the first, would they just call the the standard Elder Bus phone number, or how yes, would they, they do. The set up their appointments? Phone number, which is 800-321-0243. Uh, and make the reservation. The other thing that residents can do, if they're on a regular work schedule, they don't have to call for a reservation continually. We can put a standing order in. So if they work two days a week, three days a week, whatever, they can put a standing order in so there's no need to schedule it every day. Regarding the scheduling, by the way, I should just mention, the only thing that we ask is that uh, people utilizing the service call two business days in advance to reserve their ride. So if they need a ride on a Wednesday, if they could give us a call by the prior Monday before the close of business. That gives us a day to do the scheduling. We actually call them the next day, in this case Tuesday, to confirm the ride and then deliver the service on Wednesday. Very good, thank you. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. O'Day, you just answered my question. I was gonna ask about the reservation process. Could you um, tell me the towns that are involved or that you would provide this service for? Initially, it's going to be Southbridge, Spencer, Sturbridge, Webster, and Dudley. Um, I went before the Dudley Town Council. They had a few questions and concerns that we want to discuss at the next meeting. Um, so that may be delayed a little bit. But uh, again, it's a pilot program for 90 days. Uh, hopefully, we will get some response um, 
I don't have any particular metrics in mind at this point to determine the success or failure of the program. But actually, I, what I was hoping to do is get about 5% of our normal daily rides for a particular town. As an example, for the town of Southbridge, we provided over 8,000 rides in fiscal year 12 that just ended. So if we could even approach 5%, uh, with our with our marketing budget, we obviously haven't gotten the word out there. I'd be very happy with that. And all vehicles are handicap. All accessible. vehicles are, are handicap accessible. We, by the way, we have 21 vehicles, all with wheelchair lifts. Uh, all of our drivers, by the way, are thoroughly screened prior to employment. They are all subject to random drug and alcohol testing. So the service, uh, of course, I'm biased, but it's very safe, reliable, and an affordable service. Thank you. I think it's an excellent service. And I hope that it's usual, utilized because we, we need it, and I, I think it's fantastic. And, and also, I'd just like to say, if there are any other services that, that you think that could be of value to the town, to the residents of Southbridge, please just give me a call. Uh, again, this is something that, that uh, we developed in-house uh, with, with some input, but basically it's developed in-house. So we're, we're always looking for ways to better serve the public. Obviously, senior and disabled is our number one priority. It'll remain our number one priority, but we're always looking for ways to better utilize our own resources as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Did you have something, Council Langevin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Day, for coming forward. Um, I agree with Council Marcucci. This is, could be a huge benefit for a lot of communities. Um, I guess, really, the question would be probably directed to the acting town manager. Is it possible? Um, I don't know. I didn't hear you say it um, on the community access channel. Are we going to? We should. I understand you said you're going to put flyers together, but I think this is something that's really important that we put on our community access cable channel to also help spread the word uh, forward on that. Um, but again, I wish you a whole lot of luck, and it's a great service that you've been providing years for, but now you're extend, uh, going to try to extend it, and I appreciate that. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Council, Mor also. Council Moriarty. Uh, I, I agree that this is, this is something that's well-deserved well uh, for the people that, that need it. Uh, one question I have is with this, the current setup that you're, you're talking about doing 8.30 to 3.30, it's roughly a seven-hour time period. Your standard working shift's about eight. Uh, is there any chance, depending on the success you have or the feedback you have, that it may be pushed out from, say, 8.30 to 5.30 p.m., just to kind of uh, solicit a little bit more help? Uh, some, people, uh, some people going in that get out, at work, get out of work at 3 o'clock, they're still looking for a way to get to work or vice versa. Uh, so that's my, my big question there. Yeah, there's definitely a possibility of expanding the service, but as with every town in Central Mass or in Massachusetts, it's all budget dependent. I have a, a very limited budget. Uh, however, I do have the resources, I believe, to implement this. The, the rationale for the 8.30 to 3.30, besides being within our normal operating hours, what I was really targeting, especially now that schools are back in session, there may be people that are working during the day as their young children are in school. So that's really the target audience that we're, we're, we're trying to entice, as opposed to a full-time person that may work 7 to 3 or 8 to 4.30, something like that. Um, depending on the volume, we would certainly entertain that. Um, I thought the other way, we might get more requests for an earlier service versus a later service, uh, maybe 7 or 7.30 as opposed to the tail end. Again, depending upon the feedback we get and the volume, we'd certainly be willing to, to entertain those things. And I, and I must say, the, the, uh, we're funded by the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, by the way. Transit Authority is most definitely, um, they want to expand services in the surrounding towns, not just in the core city of Worcester. So that, this is as a result of that desire to try and expand services. So as I said, that's a possibility to expand it that way. Or if you have any other suggestions about needed transportation, we'd certainly be willing to discuss it. Excellent, and best of luck. <clears throat> Anyone else? Anything? I want to thank you very much for a service that we really do need, as you know, and um, hopefully the people in the community will take full advantage of it. Thank you, Mr. Very good. Thank you. And, and again, if you have any other input, <coughs> please feel free to give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And next we have Karen Harnoy, who is town manager by day and finance director, town accountant, whenever she can find the time. Could you please help us with your, give us your presentation. Sure, <laughs> 
whichever you prefer. Good evening, I'm Karen Harnoy, the finance director and town accountant. And I'm here to give the departmental presentation for the accounting, accounting department and the finance department. So as an introduction, there are two full-time employees in the accounting department, myself and the accounting clerk. The town accountant has the ultimate responsibility for the departmental functions. The final reviews are conducted by the town accountant on all the functions of payroll, cash receipts, disbursements, and budget-related items. The town accountant is also the super user or the designated administrator for our general ledger. So I would also be the person who would assign the new users, delete the users who aren't there anymore, update permissions, and set up the new general ledger accounts. As my role as the finance director, along with the town manager, we are responsible for creating and presenting the yearly budget forecasts of revenue and expenses. And the finance director, as I'm doing presently, will cover for the town manager during periods of vacation or other absences. And the finance director also oversees functions of the other financial departments. Now, my accountant clerk, who has been working for the town for 34 years, not always in the capacity of the accounting department, but um, just some of her roles is to review the bills and vouchers for both the town and the school, and she prepares the combined warrant, verifies availability of funds, determines compliance with applicable laws and policies, um, and she conducts some additional reviews of payroll and cash receipts. Now, she also verifies the compliance with certified payrolls and OSHA cards, um, which are requirements on capital projects. And it's been a lot of work lately with the middle and high school project, because there's been a lot of vendors and subcontractors on that job. And then she also maintains spreadsheets that she used to track expenditures on town and school grants and also on special accounts and projects that we monitor. Um, just to remind everyone that the town's fiscal year runs from July 1st <coughs> to June 30th. The town account maintains the general ledger, and the general ledger is audited yearly. A request for proposal is sent out for every three years to procure audit services. And we also send out another request for proposal that's required every two years and that is to secure actuarial services for other post-employment benefits, which generally covers, in our case, health and, and life insurance. And this is required under GASB 45, which is, is the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, which puts out a, not, a lot of pronouncements that the accountants need to follow. And now I'm just going to kind of quickly go through our role in the different um, functions. Um, the cash receipts, the departments, including the school department, um, supplies the accounting office with copies of their turnovers. And, but the treasurer's office posts the cash receipts in to the system in batch mode. And what we do as a check function is we make sure that we match up the backup to the appropriate batches, review, make sure everything's going to the right accounts, and then we post them in from there. Um, there's a couple of reports, cash receipt reports, that we prepare. Each month, we do a local receipt spreadsheet that goes to the town manager and the treasurer for review, and it compares the current month's revenue to the same month a year prior, just to see how we're doing comparison-wise, and also it compares us to the full fiscal year totals from the year before. So it gives us a good idea if we're in the range of where we should be. And cash is also reconciled monthly between the treasurer and the accountant's office. For cash disbursements, vouchers and bills are submitted to our office, examined for completeness, correctness, and compliance, as I had mentioned before, which includes any account distribution and the availability of funds. The warrant is prepared weekly for my review. After the review, the warrant is run. The warrant and the bills are given to the treasurer's office. Now, they run the checks, and they review and mail the checks as a check against us, as an internal control function. 
Now, currently, the town accountant's office re also reviews school purchase orders prior to the town manager signing off on them. We have a process where the school superintendent signs. It'll come down to me for review. I check availability of funds and the account distribution, and then the town manager will go through and sign off. So there's a dual signature process currently. Monthly budget reports are, are distributed to the town departments to reconcile to their records. And quarterly budget reports are distributed to the town council and also several other boards and committees for their review. Now in payroll, um, the accounting clerk reviews the vouchers and the payroll reports. Um, as I had mentioned before, that she maintains certain spreadsheets where you post entries into special accounts, so the grants entries are posted from payroll. Um, she prints out the town and school entries, and then, we re and then I review them a final time, make sure everything looks right and everything's posted into the general ledger. Commitments, abatements, and other entries. Now, the assessor's office generates entries during the month for um, commitments and abatements that are created and granted. There's also written documentation that backs them up so those two are reconciled together and then the entries will be posted. Now the receivable accounts and the deferred revenue accounts are balanced quarterly to the treasurer's detail reports. And if there's any other journal entries that are required to reclassify amounts or adjust amounts. Those two are um, both for town and school entered in the system, but the accountant's office has the final review and the posting for that. Now on to the budget. The finance director works with the town manager beginning usually in January to formulate the budget assumptions and the revenue forecast for the upcoming fiscal year. The um, department budgets are created and the budgets are requested from the different departments. We um, receive those in and do an init initial review. We schedule all the meetings with the department heads to have them come in and discuss. And then prior to them coming in, I do do a little bit more thorough review and going through all the salary calculations and um, some of the expenditure accounts to make sure everything looks in line. And then the, the, town, the town manager and myself meet with all the departments, and that's when the town manager makes his recommendations for the expenditure amounts. After those are determined, then I will prepare the, um, the reports that are included in the budget packet, the revenue and expense summary, the budget comparisons of the current year that we're in and the next fiscal year that we're forecasting, the budget document and any other documents um, that are needed. And then we update our PowerPoint presentation that we do every year. And then the budget books are created and distributed to the council before May 1st. Um, and then the subcommittee meetings, as you know, are scheduled and we attend those to go through all the departmental budgets. Final adjustments are made as necessary and then the budget is voted by town council in May. I'll just mention a little bit about the tax rate. It's certified by the Department of Revenue generally in December. The principal assessor and the town accountant generally have the major roles in completing the paperwork because there's a lot of financial information and valuation information needed on that. Um, and, then, and then I just want to wrap up by just mentioning a couple of reports that the office is re responsible for. Our annual report is called the Schedule A, which is due October 31st of each year. The report is required by the Department of Revenue and reports revenue expenditures and also reconciles the, the fund balances from beginning to end. And then the free cash balance sheet is another really important report that we put together and that's usually submitted in the fall. This is for free cash to be certified by the Department of Revenue and the amounts are certified for the general fund, the water fund, and the sewer fund, and they must be certified before the funds can be appropriated for use. And basically, free cash is the amount of unobligated fund balance that is available for use by the town. And then the last thing I just want to mention is that the town also supplies financial information to the school department, who files their end of year report every year. 
Now, there's this couple different signatures on there. I believe it's a superintendent, the business manager, and also the town accountant needs to sign it too. So I will supply them with the information that they need from the town. And then I also do a review of certain items on there just to make sure everything looks reasonable. And then I sign off on that. So hopefully that wasn't too long and to the point. I don't know if anybody might have any questions for me. Does anybody have any questions? I, I have a question. I was wondering if you could recommend a really good introductory book about municipal finance because I went through and I wrote down every word that you said that I didn't understand and they were an awful lot of words. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'd love to learn more about your job, but I feel like I'm so behind your level of knowledge. I was wondering if, there, if, if somebody's coming to this and has never had any sort of experience um, with municipal accounting, what would be a good way to learn more? Well, you know what I could recommend first, and it's totally up to you, I just put together just like a PowerPoint outline. If you mm -hmm. want a copy of that, you can let me know oh, so that would kind be of read through it. Um, we do have some, I don't know if the UMIS manual would be a little bit much, but maybe there's some parts in there, the Uniform Municipal Accounting System. If there's something in particular maybe you'd like to start with or focus with, or maybe there's some introduction about you know, revenues, expenditures, those type of things. So maybe sometime you could stop in the office, even on like on a Thursday night, and I could show it to you. Oh, great, thank you and so much. And maybe you could see where you might want to start. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Councilor Regis, and thank please, whatever the question is, say it in English so we all understand. No, no, it's not a question. Just to add to Karen's comments um, uh, to um, Councilor Peliquin, um, Maybe the DOR website, uh, the Division of Local Services website, provides some um, publications. Um, there's a municipal finance glossary mm -hmm. um, that they do uh, a good job with, I think. It's, it's really um, explains everything in English, if you will. And um, also there's a primer in there, I think, for um, folks like us, uh, elected officials. Um, and I think they also do a good job with that, too. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you. If, yes. if I could just comment, too, I know that there's a seminar, and I'm not sure if it took place in June, but it's, it's the new officials, new elected officials forum. That's not exactly the correct term. But if I find something on that, I can send that to you too. And a lot of the newly elected or appointed can kind of go to that and have a beginning great. forum. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Harnoy. Okay, moving along. Agenda on item number eight is Citizens Forum. Do we have any citizens who wish to come forward this evening? Anybody wish to? speak at Citizens Forum. Okay, moving right along. Agenda item number nine. Vote to confirm the appointment of Roger Cowett of Southbridge to the Protection of Persons and Property Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st, 2012. So through moved. Ju oh, sorry. Through July 31st, 2013. So, so moved. moved. I have a second? Second. Okay, can I have a roll call please? Oh, wait, any discussion? I'm so sorry. Anybody wish to discuss this appointment? Okay, roll call, please. Council Bancucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Pelican? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Cummins? Yes. Council Benjamin? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to confirm the appointment of Monique Manna of Southbridge to the Protection of Persons and Property Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Peliquin? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Micucci? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to confirm the appointment of Lawrence Spinelli of Southbridge to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Vandal? 
uh, did we have any other applicants that applied for this position? That would be the chair of the, of the general government subcommittee that would <coughs> answer that, I suppose. Do we have any other? Uh, through you to Councillor Vandal. Uh, yes, sir, we did. We had um, one additional um, letter of interest, um, which came in after I had set the agenda. After what? Came in after I had set the agenda, after we had received the initial two letters of interest, um, and I had set the agenda and put those two letters of interest, those two individuals, on the agenda. Is, that, is this uh, third one uh, the, the young lady that was on general government previously? Yes, sir. Um, I don't think that was right. I think she should have had priority since she was there. Thank you, you for know. your opinion. Thank you. Well, it's not my opinion. It should be the way it goes. Thank no, you that, for your opinion, me. Councilor. Point, point of order, Madam Chair. Councilor Vandal has the floor. Okay. Are you through? Is there something um, else really. about that? I mean, I, like I said, I don't think it's I don't think it's fair that they put the other one aside. She's been there for a few years because I was on general government, mm -hmm. and I'm no longer on it. Okay. You know. So because you're not on it, sir, you didn't have an opportunity to vote on this, and I believe it went through your subcommittee and a vote was taken. Well, Am I correct? Unanimously, yes. Okay. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Here I am. I was on general government. I was able to mm -hmm. vote on general government. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not even on. I'm not on general government. Okay. I can't vote. And yet we got a guy that went through the election, and he didn't get elected. Mm -hmm. And now you people are re-electing him. Who's so, you people? Well, the, you're going to vote for it. You, you're going to vote for Mr. Spinelli to get on the. That's you know what? We all got one have one vote, and if you choose not to to vote for him, that's your choice. I'm just going to tell you. I think it smells of fish. Thank you. Well, that's, that is again that's, your opinion. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Do we have any other? Um, discussion on this particular issue? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not going to support this tonight for two main reasons. Uh, one is, during the tenure on the Council, uh, there was the support, former Councillor Spinelli supported what I thought was a violation of the Charter in that we unlawfully removed a member of the Board of Health. And uh, I also was very dis, uh, uh, dissatisfied with the way the charter review changes were handled. And I also was, I talked to the individual who applied, and, and I think that the person who had been on it, and it, we've done it with others in the past. Uh, I know there's some, unless something's been time stamped in the town manager's office. In fact, I think, uh, Madam Chair, about two years ago, back in 2010, you had made the point that we should be getting things and it should be time stamped through mm -hmm. the time, town manager's office. And so now we got possibly, the, the, well, we don't know when they came okay. in because they weren't I can, time stamped. I can answer that for you okay. because the person that you're referring to actually emailed me on Thursday, this past Thursday morning, this past Thursday morning, and wanted to, to be included. She wanted to, to enter into the into the ring. This had already been, this agenda had already been set. She called the town the town uh, manager's office and was told that. So she did wait till the last absolute moment to do this. And I can tell you myself because she contacted me first, and I'm the one who sent her to the town manager's office. It was already it was already ready to go. So. Unfortunately, she was the last person to apply for this, and it had already been set up. It was literally first come, first serve, and that's the fair way to do it. We don't take somebody who's been on a subcommittee for years and years, and they take precedence over anybody else. It's who come, who's, who's shown an interest quickly or, or not quickly. That's how it's done. It's not, it's not a question of picking and choosing other than what names are brought forward, and that's how it was done. And I can tell you myself, Counselor, that I know that she, contact, she contacted me and she hadn't sent in any paperwork or anything, and I'm the one who directed her to the manager's office. So that's, that's how it worked. There had nothing, it was nothing to do with anything more than first come, first serve. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to follow up to that would be that uh, I think in the past we've stated that it should be on qualifications, um, and we've tried to align on what I thought would be this same procedure and process along the lines of the town manager's appointments as we did with these appointments and we had a
candidate was interested in another position who was on, had expressed a tenure, uh, interest in maintaining their tenure on the liquor board and was denied. So I, I don't think we're being consistent and I don't think we should be putting people on subcommittees based on first come, first serve, but on qualifications. Now, not, that notwithstanding, I know Mr. Spinelli has the qualifications mm -hmm. as, as did the other candidate, mm -hmm. but I just think it's important to clarify that. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate You're it. welcome. Madam Thank Chair, you. if I could, please. Councilor just, Regis. Uh, as chairman of that subcommittee, mm -hmm. and just to be clear, um, Chairman Nicola is absolutely correct. It was first come, first serve. I waited. I had one um, letter of interest. I waited for a second. I waited for a while for a second. Um, we got the second. I was contacted by the town manager's office. I set the agenda. And I was then contacted on Monday morning by the town manager's office stating that the third individual had faxed over her letter of interest. The agenda had already been set. I reached out to that individual personally and explained to her um, that's, that's how it worked. There's no mystery in it. I got the first two letters, set the agenda, because I thought they were both uh, very qualified individuals. And I thanked her. And I told her that I would wish that she had come forward sooner, because then she absolutely would have been considered. I don't know what's expected. I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I, this individual didn't reach out to me. So I didn't know if she was still interested or not. So I set the agenda with the individuals I had, and that's the way it went. There's no mystery in this whatsoever. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clements and then Councillor Pelliquin. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I wasn't going to say too much, but it seems to have gone back and forth quite a bit. I just want to point out that um, this isn't the only person who didn't get what they wanted. And, and I think the individual you're speaking of certainly did a great job. I said that myself to this person um, and tried to explain the first come, first serve process too. But for instance, in the next agenda item, Mr. James, he approached me after hearing that it was time for subcommittees. And we had announced at numerous meetings that we were looking for citizens members. Um, and he approached me about EHS because I was no longer EHS and he was curious as to how that was going to work out with that because he had been on EHS with me. Um, and I said, Councillor Marcucci was EHS and, and I'm sure she'd be setting up a meeting, but he needed to get his letter of interest in. And he wanted EHS, but he knew that, and I, at the time I said, you know, I think I heard that there was already some interest for EHS. And so, I, uh, I said, well, see what else is out there, what else is available to you. And while he did want that, um, there was obviously at that time still an opening for general government. I believe even the town manager's office, I think Yvonne um, had mentioned that to him, that there were openings in some of the other committees, mm -hmm. because there were. And um, he did what he thought was right, and he put his name, he wanted to be part of this, and he um, did so, obviously, because he's now being confirmed on that as a citizen's member. So he was under the, under he understood the concept that he didn't get it in soon enough, somebody else did, and they had already set up a meeting, and, and so I think every citizen has the right to try to uh, be on a subcommittee. I don't think longevity, while that helps when you understand things, on the other hand, it's not a, it's not a given. I think we should, that's why there are one-year appointments, because other people may come forward and want to participate, and I think we should give that chance to everybody who doesn't necessarily want to run for elected office and have a three-year commitment, but a one-year commitment is nice. So um, that was a case in point that happened with Mr. Jaynes, and he's now going to be on general government if we vote for him tonight. And, um, you know, hopefully the other, I, I said to the other individual also, I encouraged her to uh, continue to be part and come in and voice her opinion at the committee. Just because you don't get a vote, you still can voice your opinion as a citizen at any subcommittee meeting or right up here on the floor. Because as we know, what comes up from subcommittee is ultimately voted by the full council. So, uh, you know, either way you can still participate whether you're an actual member or not. So that's my okay. input. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Councillor Pelquin, you Did you want to follow up on yes. something? Yes, I did. Um, I, I think you smell fishy, too, because it was, a, it was at one of these meetings not long ago. Okay, yes. Councillor, you it, know, there's no, there's no need for that, and it, I need you, to, I need you to, to change the way you speak to members of the Council up here. I've been I accused of it, and you, do, you need fishy. to also. You, you that's, speak, that's my opinion. 
Councillor Pelliquin, do you have something to say? Yes, I was just going to say perhaps this um, first come, first serve policy might be better codified because I don't believe it's uniformly practiced across the boards and subcommittees here in town. I know that one of the uh, citizen members of the other subcommittee I was on didn't need to uh, submit. I can't hear you. He didn't need to submit a new interest form this year because they just used the one that he had submitted previously. He used the same form, but he did submit a form. I'm not, I can't, okay. I'm not sure. Well, that's what has to happen. A form has to be submitted. You can make a copy of what you've submitted in the past. That doesn't matter if it's, but you have to submit an interest form every single year. That's what has to happen. It is, as Councillor Clements said, there's no given. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be a given. It should be new blood or fresh blood or other interest or move to another subcommittee. But if it works out the way some, some subcommittees have the same citizen members year after year, they're obviously getting their name in early. That's all I can say on that matter. And that's the way under my chairmanship it works. There's no fishiness going on. It's fairness. And um, I'm going to let it go there. Council Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I mean, really, I think we could, every year I think this could be an issue. Um, I think when they decided to have citizens members on committees, the intent was to get citizens more involved in our government. Um, and it, it's worked out pretty well. The, the only problem that I do see, and we, we can't change that, and I would like to see it changed actually is, um, but I don't, and I'm torn on this because I don't want to discourage citizens um, because it's hard to find many people to volunteer their time. But we have certain citizens that give their time up every year, and it, I'm grateful for that, and I thank them for that. Um, personally, I would like to see citizens learn to rotate off on different subcommittees year after year so it gives them a more verse of how our government really works. And I think that was some part of the intent of what we're doing here. It hasn't worked out that way um, by no fault of the, those citizens because again, they're volunteering their time to give back to their community. Um, I, I don't. I don't think there's any malice going on here. It, it, it's how it worked out. Um, this person that's not on the subcommittee, um, as Council Clement said, can participate in the sub, all subcommittees. They're open. They can be um, active and speak their mind. Um, they're not a voting member of that subcommittee. We all aware of it. Um, but. There's plenty, there's plenty of other areas in this community that we're looking for people to volunteer. So if it didn't happen in this subcommittee, I, I don't want to discourage them. I want them to stay involved in our community and um, you know, take pride in, in, in what they do. Um, I, I just, I feel bad because again, I have, I have the two same subcommittee members that put in a request right away, and that's what I did. I didn't wait for three, four or stuff. We have government and we have business to move on. So we can't delay the process. I actually did delay it maybe a week because I was on vacation, but I knew we had to move forward. So um, it's unfortunate. I hope this person does stay involved because um, I think last year she's, she was very good for that subcommittee and very open-minded and, um, you know, from being in the audience to actually being in a subcommittee meeting, you kind of see things a little different. And uh, I hope she does participate, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, just as a, a, a little bit on that, um, she has heard from three sitting members of this council with that sentiment. Councillor Regis, mm -hmm. Councillor Clements, and myself have all either emailed her, or spoken to her directly, and, and offered her the opportunity to, you know, either come to subcommittees and, and speak her mind or participate in that way or get involved on another board or committee. And that's certainly, you know, she, she's very valuable and very, very helpful and hopefully she will do so. But that, of course, is her choice. 
And I, again, it was a very fair process, and I'm sorry if some people think otherwise, but it wasn't. Madam Chair. Councillor McDonald. No, thank you, Madam Chair. I think, you know, we all know that perception can come about just mm -hmm. by even simple little things or comments, and, and I think what Councillor Vandal was alluding to was a comment, and I don't remember who made it, at the very last meeting of the last council, just when we were saying our goodbyes to Council Spinelli, somebody made the comment, we know you're not going away, you'll be back. And, and somebody could take that, and, and perception sometimes becomes reality. And so yeah. I just wanted to, you know, to point that, that out, that that could be driving some of the um, suspect feelings. Thank you, Madam well, Chair. I think that the fact that it has been dispelled should be enough, but that's just me. Councillor Moriarty. Uh, just, just for clarification, based on, on some of the comments, uh, Madam Chair, I believe said uh, the phone call came in from the third candidate uh, this past Thursday. She emailed me at work. I thought it was Thursday. Maybe it was earlier in the week. I don't remember. But it was very late in, in the game. And I said to her, I suggest you contact the town manager's office right away, which she did. She called the town manager's office and was told at that point that there were two names in that were going into the um, subcommittee for a vote. And Councillor Regis was notified, and Councillor Regis um, advised the town manager's office that she would speak directly with that person, and she did. Do, do you recall whether or not that came before or after the general government meeting on Wednesday the 22nd? It must have been before, because okay. those two names were on the general government um, subcommittee meeting. Okay. Uh, the, the only other comments I really have, it, it, while I disagree with the idea of a first come, first serve basis, mm -hmm. I, I do feel it should be very much so qualification based. Mm -hmm. uh, I also don't believe, and, and this goes in a lot of, lot of different places, uh, I'm not a big fan of, of tenure per se. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that you're inheriting uh, any sort of position. Mm -hmm. um, and my assumption would be, which is always dangerous, that uh, if this particular motion was to, to go through uh, that if, if the opposition is, is solely based on tenure, that there would also be opposition for the second appointment. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and quite a few, and a, quite a few sitting members of citizen members of subcommittees. That's that's very true. But the, the fact remains that if people really want to serve on a subcommittee, as soon as they know that the subcommittees are forming, they send in their letter of interest. And that's why you get an awful lot of repeaters, because they immediately send in their letter of interest. They want to be on those subcommittees. For whatever reason it is, that's what happens. It happens every single year. And it's not a question of picking and choosing. It's the names that are, are presented to the, counts, the uh, chairs of the, of the subcommittees. They bring them forward, and who, who, the existing members of that subcommittee take the vote. Um, and that's just that's how it worked out. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that, you know, she, she was, was not, not confirmed or not listed here. And, but there was no, there, that was all it is. And I'm really not going to any, go any further because I'm uncomfortable. I feel like I'm defending something I have no reason to defend. So well, guess, without anything guess, else, yes, unless I, if there's, if this is name calling, I will not, not be call. listening it's to you, counselor. Call. It's not, or, you, or, you know, I just want to say through, you three, you, know, you three gals, you know what, what, what was going on. And I think you should be ashamed of yourself. And I think you should be ashamed and of yourself think, for making a comment that has no merit it at all. Huh? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And that's enough. If there's no further discussion on this agenda item, I would like to take a roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? No. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Six yes, three no. Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to confirm the appointment of Michael Jaynes of Southbridge to the General Government Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2013. So moved. Second. Do we have any discussion? I didn't think oh, so. Yeah, right. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Nine yes? Unbelievable. I swear. I s <laughs>
to ten. Agenda item number 13, vote to ratify the agreement with AA Transportation Incorporated to lease 40,345 square feet of parking at 185 Gulfwood Road at a monthly rental fee of $1,500 effective July 1, 2012 and ending June 30, 2013 with the right to extend this lease three times for three successive one-year periods commencing July 1, 2013, July 1, 2014, and July 1, 2015, respectively. So moved. Second. Discussion? Councillor Vandal. Um, it says here three years, successive one-year periods. Three times we can uh, uh, agree to the contract. Is that for the $1,500 every, every time? Or can we go up uh, on, on the price? It says with the right to extend this lease. So it's the 1500 And it is, there's nothing set in stone. It's just the right to extend it. It doesn't mean that we will vote to extend it. They have the right to extend it. But it's going to be at 1500 OK, correct. thank you, thank you. Anything else? Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to ratify the contract between the Town of Southbridge and Industrial Protection Services for the purchase of 25 complete air pack units and to test and recertify our existing 15 air pack units for, the total, for a total cost of $150,000, said funding from existing capital borrowing. So moved. Second. Move discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda on item number 15, vote to approve the new recruitment process for deputy chief as detailed in town manager's memo dated August 15, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, just uh, was very disappointed to see that this position was advertised before we even had the selection criteria prepared, approved by this council. And once again, I feel that the administration put the cart before the horse in this matter. Um, now, in looking at the procedure, I, I have confidence and faith in the procedure and think it's a good one. And I'm going to vote in favor of using this procedure, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to vote in favor of filling this position. Uh, but, and that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, just so you know, your sentiment was echoed in the meeting minutes and was read off this evening. Anybody else have anything on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 16, vote to ratify the contract between the Town of Southbridge and KMS actuaries for the GASB 45 OPEB actuarial study in the amount of $5,900. So moved. Second. Do I have any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 17. Vote to ratify the appointment of the Master Planning Steering Committee consisting of Rosemary, or I'm sorry, Rosemarie Alicia Lamoureau, Carlos Garcia, Joan Greenberg, Arnold Lani, Patrick Leconto, Christopher Morse, Cynthia Neal, Philip Petnelli, and Karen Perkarski, and nine ad hoc subcommittees. So moved. Second. I will be recusing myself from this vote as I have a family member on one of the ad hoc subcommittees. At this time, I'd like to call Mrs. Ackley up to the podium to give a brief overview 
of this agenda item. Thank you, Mrs. Ackley. I'll be as brief as possible, and then you can ask whatever questions that you might have. Um, of course, we're all very excited about starting master planning at last. We hired, um, uh, at your vote and ratification, community preservation associates for our consultants, and they have been very hard at work um, studying our town, uh, doing a lot of research, and writing chapters on existing conditions. And that's the first part of the master planning process, is to write out what the existing conditions are. That's one of the reasons why master plans, when they're done, are thick like this. The next step is to appoint steering committee members and ad hoc uh, subcommittees. The actual planning will be done in the public forum, um, but we always have, uh, well, master planning projects always have steering committee members, and I thought I would just very briefly read what their functions are. The steering committee first will participate in and oversee the actual planning work. But that doesn't mean that they're the ones that decide what goes into the plan, but they're the ones that actually solicit the input from citizens and um, encourage them to put in uh, that input. Their second role is to conduct master planning outreach and participation, actually. That's part of their first role, too. This is an important task because it's critical to receive public input when forming the elements of the master plan. The third role of the steering committee is to serve as subcommittee chairs. And the subcommittees are based on the nine elements that are part of any master plan. And they are goals and policies, housing and neighborhoods, open space and recreational sources, services and facilities, implementation and funding, land use and zoning, economic development, natural and cultural resources, and transportation and circulation. And we also added a few elements our, of our own, which is appropriate and allowed. So I'll ask if you have any questions. Any questions? You have a question, Councillor? I just have a comment. Uh, I'm very pleased to see this coming forward and to see the caliber of people who are on this committee. Uh, it, you know, they're going to do a great job for us, and this is something that I had mentioned when I campaigned in, in, for this position. So just want to commend them on getting the process started and uh, look forward to their good work. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thanks. I just Go ahead. Councilor. Oh, I just have a, a brief question for Mrs. Ackley. Um, Thank you. I'm looking at this list of subcommittees, and I, I noticed in the minutes that um, the people on the subcommittees, the ad hoc subcommittees, don't necessarily have to live in Southbridge. And I, I just I look through, and there's a lot of really familiar names in here, and I know a lot of people live in Southbridge. I see one person who lives out of town. I was just wondering. Is, is there are five of them. Okay. And they are all the the five people that were asked are all people who have a vested interest in the work of those particular subcommittees. Okay, thank you. I should have starred them. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. You know, I, I just wanted to add one thing because um, I was a little bit involved. 150 times I signed my name <laughs> to a letter that Mrs. Ackley's office did send out to people in the community, letting them know what we, that they were trying to do and looking for people who were interested. These people weren't just picked out of a hat. They were. It was basically people who responded to the letter. I. I understand, and so I wanted to make that clear. Some of the people that have come forward are it's quite an impressive list, I must say. And uh, I want to thank everybody who's willing to work on this project. It's a, it's a large project, it's a long-term project, and it should be a lot of fun at some point. I hope point. so, and I hope everybody will be involved in the actual planning. I think the plan will be as good as the input that it receives. Absolutely. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to ask Mrs. Ackley? Then can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes, one recuse. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 18, Councilor's Forum. 
Councillor Regis. Oh. <laughs> um, I have nothing. I, I have nothing this evening. I can't. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Landman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple things. Um, as I was riding around the other evening, I, I noticed, and um, I would like to see if we could have the auxiliary police officers um, patrol the parks a little better. I'm noticing a lot of trash. Uh, we have a lot of kids that like to play, but and I noticed the trash cans there, but I don't think they know what it's for. So um, again, it's respecting the community and use the trash can, but if we could have police officers, I know it's at the end of the season, but again, monitor that because uh, DPW shouldn't be uh, going around picking up after people um, when there's a trash can right there. So if uh, we could look into that, I'd appreciate that until the season's pretty much done. Um, and the other thing that I had is, I noticed when you watch some of these meetings back on television, and it is a problem here now, right now, the volume's very good. But I gotta say, the volume is all over the place. So if we can correct that problem, um, when you're at home watching the replay, you gotta turn the volume all the way up to get somewhat of the replay back that you can hear it. And then over here, when you're trying to pay attention to people um, speaking, you just, you can't hear them well. Um, so if we could try to rectify that problem, I'd greatly appreciate it. And last but not least, I just want to wish everyone a, please have a safe and happy Labor Day. And thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Pelliquin? Uh, nothing for me tonight, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Over the past several months, um, I have asked the town manager if we could possibly have a presentation from either Kim Grant or m maybe even Eric Jacobson on our uh, trash and recycling program. And I have yet to receive an answer. Do you have any direction with that, Madam Chair? Is it something, because I read our weekly report and we're still getting numerous calls and questions from residents about the process. And I was wondering if that's something that can be addressed at the next council meeting. I will make it my personal um, job okay. to have both Kim Grant and Eric Jacobson on the next town council presentation. Instead of a head of a department, we will have them come in and talk. How does Thank that you. sound? Would you be Thank happy you with that? Much. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? That's Anything it, else? Madam Chair. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Councilor Vandal? Oh, same old, same old. Railroad tracks still haven't been removed. The other two, they were supposed to be removed. Uh, Marver Street Field. We need a security light on that building because the kids keep putting graffiti on there and it's costing us money and time to keep painting it. The diamond at Morris Street Field is, is almost gone. I go up there all the time. I use that road to get home and uh, it's all grass. It, it, it's, it's a green, it's green, you know, the diamond area. And uh, let's see, there was something else. I guess that's it for now, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to thank you for, your, uh, for excusing my tardiness. The traffic was pretty heavy from Quincy here. Um, um, also, the sound issue, we used to have monitors that reflected the sound back at us so we could hear ourselves. And, and now the only thing I hear is what's going out up top. So if we could get something back here, it would be nice to caveat off what Councilor Langevin said. Um, the other thing, I've been asked by a couple of people and, and then also looked at it for myself, uh, the meeting minutes for the October 19th or 20th special meeting, um, that was the hearing for Ann Bynum and the Board of Health. They're not on the website and uh, I, I was told they're not available in the town clerk's office. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just, I, I was asked and I thought I'd bring it up, uh, I was asked to bring it up actually to find out the status of those minutes. And other than that, just uh, like Council Langevin said, want to wish everybody a safe and enjoyable uh, Labor Day weekend. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Moriarty. Just uh, one quick plug for today. Uh, 
before the next meeting on the 10th, uh, one fundraiser that I've, I've mentioned uh, last meeting, connections with Gary McKinstry, who's a local medium, psychic, seer, uh, whatever term you prefer to use. Uh, it's a Relay for Life fundraiser event on Friday, September 7th at the Knights. The event starts at 7, doors open at 6.15, tickets are 35 at the door, 30 in advance, uh, and for the massive crowd, we always have an attendance. Uh, if anyone wants, I have some tickets with me. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Councilor? Is that it? That's it? Okay, thank you. Councilor Clements. Thank you. Nothing this evening. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. I agree. Madam Chair. Um, okay. Madam Chair. Yes. There was one more thing, and I did forget, and I apologize for it. Um, and I know government does move slow. Um, but in the future, could we look at the possibility, and again, it pertains money, but if we could look at even a cheaper alternative, Henry Street Field, the parking area, which is town owned, is atrocious. Um, um, I just, just so you know, yep. Mrs. Ackley has, it's the grant, there's a grant, the CDBG grant, correct? We'll be addressing Henry Street Fields parking area. And um, as I have said in previous meetings to Mrs. Ackley, I want as much, I don't care, I, don't, I want it to be daytime all the time over there. I want lots of lights. Um, this is not being unfair. This is the reality. And that area, you know, if you're going to have children down there, if we're going to be spending money, I don't want it to look the way it looks now or ever again look like that. Because, you know, personally, I'll go down there. I will. I think everybody in this community knows that I'm totally capable, and I will go down there because I'm getting a little tired of whoever it is. I'm not going to pinpoint youth or special groups or whoever, but whoever it is that's in our community that thinks it's fun to trash our community, could you please leave? Could you just leave? I don't care if you're six years old or 60. I'm really tired of cleaning up after you. And the people, for the people who think that Worcester Street is open the window and throw your trash out as you're going to Charlton, could you stay in Charlton? Because we don't need you. But that is an issue that will be addressed, and I can assure you that when we spend good money down there, that area is going to be patrolled by either the cops or by Mrs. Nicola. And I'm not kidding, because I live down there, and I'm sick and tired of it. I, I'm not a slob. I was Thank taught you. that there are trash cans for a reason. And, you know, that area will be looked at. Okay, Councillor? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Could we have the next meeting date, Councillor Clements? Monday, September 10th, 2012, 7 p.m. here in the Chambers. Okay. Agenda item number 20 is adjournment. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Good night.